Today is April 25th, 2011. My name is Latasha Wilson and I'm with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University Library. And I'm in Tipton, Oklahoma today and I'm talking with Irma Lou Dunlap. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for talking with me. We're interviewing Irma Lou as part of the Spotlighting Oklahoma Oral History Series. Thank you. Let's start by having you tell me when and where you were born. I was born in Tipton, Oklahoma, southwest of town, two and a half miles. And uh, I was born on January the 31st, 1926, at my home. And on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> my mother missed church that morning. Uh oh. <laughs> 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 what were your parents' names? My daddy's name was Cloris Alvin Parks, and my mother's name was Audrey Wilson Parks. And were you their first child, or did they have several others? I was the first. We had four all together, but I was the oldest, and my sister was the youngest, and we had two brothers in between. And how long had your parents lived in that house before you were born? Three years. Where had they lived before then, or where did they come from? Well, when they got married, they built that house, okay. and that's where they where we lived, and that's where I was born. And did they both grow up in the Tipton area? Yes, they did, and they both graduated from Tipton High School. Do you know what years they graduated? 1922, I think it was. And they, they were high school sweethearts? Yes. Did you ever hear details of their wedding or their courtship or anything? Well... Uh, my daddy was a big basketball player, and uh, I don't know exactly about the courtship exactly, but uh, but they got married mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, lived on the farm out there. My daddy's father gave them 80 acres, oh. and they built a house on it there, wow. and that's where I was born. How many bedrooms were in the house? We only had two. We had a bathroom, though. We well, at first we didn't have a bathroom, but I remember that we had one uh, about the first one that people had indoors, you know. Oh. <laughs> so, did, would you have neighbors coming over to your house to see your bathroom? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and your father was a farmer. Yes, he was. What were his, his main crops? Well, he was a cotton farmer, and uh, they, I think we had alfalfa and maybe some wheat or oats. And uh, he put in the first irrigation that was put in in Tipton, hmm. first irrigation well. Do you remember any details about that? Well, I just remember that he did, and there's a, a kind of plaque out there, a concrete plaque, and it's got my brother's name on it. Hmm. That's neat. Where we used to live. I went out there one day and only things left that. <coughs> Where would the water come from for that first irrigation setup? He had to be put down an irrigation well. Oh, the well. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. We had the first irrigation well, I think, in Tipton, didn't we? I don't know. I think I know so. That Robert worked for his brother in law and they drilled all the wells around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we think had an irrigation well. Mm -hmm. Did you have many animals? Yes, we did. We had a dairy. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. My daddy uh, had a, built a dairy barn, and we um, had milked a lot of cows and sold to Stephens Dairy Company. In Tipton? In Altus. Okay. Mm -hmm. They picked up our milk. Mm -hmm. So would you help out with the milking? Yeah, I had to wash the... Yeah, we separated some milk, you know, to make us have cream. I had to wash the separator. <laughs> so would you take that all the way into Altus? Mm-hmm. And how would you get to Altus? Well, I think they may have picked the milk up. I think they did. Did your family have a car early on? or? Yes, we did. Do you remember what kind it was? first one we had was a Model T. And I have a picture when I was about, well, I was walking, just Probably two oh, neat. out there by the car. I remember I got that picture somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Well, what were some of your other chores around the house? Well, as I grew up, I was the oldest, so I got all the chores of helping mother cook and and uh, dress chickens to put in the freezer. So we'd uh, raise a big bunch of chickens, you know, and then every Saturday morning, or every morning, she and I dressed t 10 chickens and put them in the freezer. Mm. And then all winter, you know, we had fried chicken. Mm. And did you collect a lot of eggs? Yes, we did. <laughs> did you have pigs? Yes, we did. Did you have a smokehouse on your property? Mm -hmm. or We did. Did your family have a big garden? Yes. Did mother, your... mother did most of the gardening, and so she'd leave me in the house to wash the dishes. She'd go gather the garden stuff, <laughs> which that was okay for me. <laughs> <laughs> did she do a lot of canning? Yes, she did. And okay. freezing. We had a freezer when we first got electricity. Okay. And uh, so then we began to freeze, put things in the freezer. Mm -hmm. But we can. We, we like to can fruit. So we canned a lot of peaches. I remember my cousin and I would visit each other when we was canning, you know, to help. And of course, we enjoyed each other's company. What were some of your favorite meals that your mother would prepare? Everything she made was really good, but I remember she used to make a hamburger gravy, and I thought that was my favorite, <laughs> hamburger gravy. Oh, my kids. And then said, I want you to set aside a time to make his grandson's hamburger gravy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We'd have hot biscuits and hamburger mm. gravy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good. Mother would make homemade biscuits. Mm. And that was so good. I, could, I probably couldn't make a biscuit today if my life depended on it. <laughs> but she made a ton of them. <laughs> did you help out in the cotton field any? Well, I, I did a little bit. But mostly Daddy said, you stay at the house and help Mother. And he, I had two brothers and they worked in the fields. and He said, you stay at the house and help your Mother. What about laundry? I helped her do the laundry. We had a, an old... Maytag washing machine out in the wash house, and uh, I remember putting the clothes through the wringer. And if you ever got your hand in that, sure did hurt. Oh my goodness, I bet. <laughs> Which I did. <laughs> Do you remember any tornadoes coming through? I remember when I was a teenager that my grandmother was living with us. She was an invalid, and she couldn't. Uh, walk and uh, we looked out I said well it looks to me like there's a tornado coming and grandmother said push me over to the window I want to see it so I pushed her over to the window and we watched the thing dip down out there oh my goodness <laughs> wow so you didn't run to the cellar for that one <laughs> I didn't run to the cellar for that one but the, I remember going to the cellar you know because we'd hear one was coming and we had a cellar. Did any tornadoes ever cause any destruction in Tipton? Yes. My mother's house, the roof blew off of her house. She was out at my house and it came a tornado and uh, blew the roof off of her house. It was over in the yard of the neighbors. Wow. Did the contents of her house stay put? Or yes. Did that? Wow. Yes, they did. Hmm. Do you remember what all what year that was? Or what decade? Do you remember when that was? It must have been in... What year did you marry? I forgot. I got married in 1946. It was after that. Did you have any kids by that time? They'd kind of tell you when it was. I think I did. We lived out in the country, but my mother lived here in town. Well, we can add it in later if we think about yeah. it. Um, what about school? When did you start to school? Well, I started school in the first grade here at Tipton, and I went all through high school, graduated from Tipton. And what year did you graduate? 1944. And how would you get to school? On school bus. Yeah. I remember the first year I went to school, I had to walk to the corner to get on the bus, and it was a quarter of a mile. 
but I, I was scared to walk because the neighbors down on the end of the, of the road had some dogs, and I was scared of those dogs, so Mother would have to walk down there with me, <laughs> protect me from the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember some of your teachers? Yes, I do. My first teacher was Miss Ralston, and I thought she hung the moon, you know. I wanted to please her. So when I first started school, we had a bunch of little chairs at the front of the room where we sat to read. So my cousin and I were in the same room, uh, school. So we had bought some bubble gum. <laughs> and so we wanted to shoot that bubble gum, so we had it in our mouths and we went in and we had to sit in these little chairs to read. And I knew when she came to me and I couldn't read because I had my mouth full of bubble gum. So I, I put my bubble gum in my hand and I thought, now I'll hold it when I get through reading and I'll put it back in my mouth. Well, I was holding my book and so when I wanted to put my gum back, my mouth had stuck on the back <laughs> of my book. <laughs> so I had, I passed my book in and when the teacher found that bubble gum on it, you know, she was very incensed and so she, uh, went around and asked every one of us, we did that. And I stoutly denied it. And I know she knew by my face that I did it. <laughs> but you never actually got in trouble for it. <laughs> no, I didn't, but I should have. <laughs> and then when I was in the second grade, Miss Johnson gave me a whipping. And she wasn't even my teacher, but she was just, I think in the change of life, that's what I always thought. <laughs> but she was ill as a hornet, and we were in her room to eat lunch. I didn't even, wasn't even in her class. And so when we got through, well, we were going to march out, so she said, get in line, and I walked real fast because I needed to go to the bathroom real bad. She said I ran. So she snatched me out of the line and gave me a whipping in front of the whole school. Mm. Well. I was needing to go to the bathroom real bad, so I just wet all over her shoes <laughs> <laughs> and all over the floor. Oh, my oh I was so humiliated, I just thought I'd die. Oh. I went out and sat on the sidewalk and cried. And finally, I called my mother and I said, Mother, could I wet my pants. I didn't tell her I got a whipping. I told her that years later. Because <laughs> I thought if you got a whipping at school, you know, that was a disgrace. Mm -hmm. And you might get a bigger one at home. <laughs> yeah. Now, my brothers, they didn't care if they got whipped at school or not, you know, but I did. So she came up there and brought me some dry clothes. And <laughs> so I got them dried out. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, well, Mother made all our panties at home, you know, and all our clothes, pajamas and everything. So she brought me some clean panties to wear. <laughs> <laughs> did she ever make any clothes out of flower sacks? Yes, she did. Oh, boy. Yeah, mm -hmm. she did. She was a really a good seamstress. She sewed for the public. And did she quilt also? Yes. She Do you did. have some of her quilts now? Yes. And I have one that was made out of the my grandmother's dresses. I oh. cut uh, material out, made blocks, you know, and I still have it. Wow, that's amazing. It's, a, it's not a full size quilt, but it's a smaller one. It's did both sets of your patch? Did both sets of your grandparents live nearby? Well, my grandmother Parks died when I was just real young, but they lived uh, out toward the river, out there, right across from where Raynell and them lived. And then my grandmother Whitaker lived right here in town. And she's the one that later lived with you? Mm hmm She had Parkinson's disease and she mm -hmm. shook. First her thumbs started shaking and then her hands started shaking and she finally just shook all over. And did they know it was Parkinson's then? Yes. And she always thought it was because she'd been in a car wreck and it got a brain injury, mm -hmm. you know. That she shook. Well, do you know how either of your grandparents came to settle in this area? Or where their families came from originally? Well, I think they came from Georgia. Parks did. 
So I, I don't remember exactly where her mother's family came from. I know she grew up in Hess. And did you go to Hess much since yep. your mom was from there? Not much because it wasn't anything there. But when I was little, we used to go over there because my mother had a farm over there. Oh. And my uncle lived on it, Uncle Lelis. Mm -hmm. And we went over there. He uh, he made uh, homebrew. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about that? <laughs> I just remember him doing it. <laughs> Would people talk about it? <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> and then we'd go over in Jackson County to get uh, molasses. Mm. They made molasses over there. Mm. And would you eat that on some biscuits? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, would your family come to town to Tipton on Saturdays? Yes, we came to Tipton and we'd visit around, you know, and sit in cars and visit with each other and buy candy and eat candy. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend named Alma, Alma Jo Schatz. In fact, she lived just right next door here. Mm -hmm. And uh, she always had money, so we'd <laughs> 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 buy nickel or dimes worth of candy and sit in the car and eat it. <laughs> remember how, when you got older, we got to drag Maine. I thought it was about two miles. Oh. It was two blocks. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. That's yeah. right. Yeah. The drugstores, you know, there's one on each end of town. So we'd stop at the drugstore and get us a, a phosphate, wasn't it? That's what we got. A, mm. I think it was called a phosphate. Yeah. A soda? Cherry, cherry phosphate. Mm. <laughs> Drink the the first pop I remember drinking was your Uncle Paul Heff bought. I never had been in the drugstore until that day I was with Daddy. I didn't hardly know about all that. <laughs> Did they have ice cream shakes? Uh huh. I remember the first ice cream milkshake I got. It was uh, down at Paul Largent's. At the drugstore uh -huh. there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that was good. <laughs> Do you remember the first film you saw? Well, I used to go to the show every Saturday afternoon when we come to town. It cost a dime to go to the show. I could have a quarter. That Daddy'd give me a quarter. I could go to the show, buy me a Coke and a sack of popcorn for a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> and the first show I remember seeing is Hop Along Cassidy. Hmm. I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, I thought Hop Along Cassidy was really something. <laughs> So would you ever go to Altus or Frederick or other towns mm -hmm. around? Sometimes we did. I had an aunt that lived at Altus, Aunt uh, Minnie, my daddy's oldest sister. And uh, we'd, I'd go over there and stay a week or two every summer with her mm -hmm. and my cousin and I, Joy, and, and they had a, a basement and it had a kind of a tunnel that went from the house to this basement. So we'd really play in that, you know, and, and they, my Uncle Moss was a hunter. He had a bear skin uh, rug on the floor and it was kind of a head, had a head on it, you know, <laughs> where he'd had it fixed into a rug. And We played in there on those animals and things. And mm -hmm. She always made us peanut butter cookies. Oh. <laughs> so good. I made myself sick eating peanut butter cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Was there much peanut farming around here? Mm -mm, not then. Not, not then, then, but there, later there was. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wonder why the basement was connected with a, a tunnel. I wonder what that was designed for. I don't know. I guess just to, for storms, mm -hmm. I guess. It would have been if it was a storm and destroyed the house. It would be in the basement. Mm -hmm. Well, did, were you involved in sports? Yes, <laughs> I played basketball. I was forward. The I was the 
Middle Fork, you know, used to we had three divisions in the court. We had both ends, and then we had a, a middle, and there were two players, two guards, and two middle ones, and two forwards, and I was a forward. How old were you when you started playing? I made the high school team when I was a freshman. And played through your senior year? Yes, I did. <laughs> And would you all travel around to other towns and uh -huh. play? We did. Who were some of your biggest opponents? Well, we always uh, had to play at Weaver, and that's about the only one we ever won. <laughs> 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 we didn't win too many. I'll tell you why. We play, had football in Tipton, and they practiced football clear up to, uh, I guess it was, was it Christmas? How long did football last? And our basketball got off to a late start because we had football. So we never were as good as the other teams in the county. <laughs> would you go to football games? Oh, yes, I did. And then would you watch the boys play basketball and then mm -hmm. have the girls games? And I was in the pep club, you know, glee club or pep club, whatever we called it, at, when, in high school. What were the women's basketball uniforms like? Well, I thought they was real pretty. <laughs> they were real old when I first started. And it seemed like we got some new suits before I graduated. And did they look anything like women's basketball uniforms today? Pretty much, they did. Just some shorts and mm -hmm. a tank top? Mm -hmm. I remember some of the Tipton home kids couldn't play because they wouldn't let them wear those shorts. Oh. <laughs> Would you have to provide your own basketball shoes? Uh-huh. I did. Are there any particular games you remember or anything of involving basketball? Well, I just always loved it. And, and my daddy always came and watched me practice every day after school. We practiced after school. So he'd come and watch us practice, and I was always glad he did that because he was a good basketball player. He always gave me tips on what I needed to do. Did you have a basketball hoop at home ever? Yes, we did. Would people pay to come to the basketball games? or was Yes. It... Mm -hmm. I really loved it. I'd rather play as eat. <laughs> Did your brothers or sisters play basketball too? Yes, they did. My, my brother, especially Sue, played, but she, yeah, she did. We all four played. Was there baseball in Tipton in the summer? I think there was. It seemed like there was. I think Cheryl played baseball. But I don't remember Dean playing baseball particularly. What holidays were celebrated the most in your family? Well, we always had a big Christmas, and we usually had a big Thanksgiving, and uh, always had company at Easter, and uh, every Sunday night, I had company after church. We'd go out to my house, and mother would fix a big roast, and we'd eat after church. With your friends or mm -hmm. your parents' friends too, With my or friends, mm -hmm. we'd have a table full. Mm -hmm. Was anyone in your family musical? Yes, my mother was musical. She taught herself to play the piano, and then my sister took piano lessons and learned. But when I was growing up, we didn't have a piano until I was already too old to take lessons. I thought, <laughs> but I did take some lessons on the. Ukulele. Oh. So I learned to play a little bit. Miss Caps was my teacher. In Tipton? Mm hmm. She lived out at Lang, but she taught music. You remember Miss Caps, don't Do you? Do I? <laughs> Mother wanted Noyce to take lessons, and he'd go up to the north side of the farm. He didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> to avoid the lessons? Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, I, I learned a little bit, <laughs> but not too much. We didn't get a piano until I was older. 
My sister took piano lessons, but I never did. So how often would you go to church? Every, Every Sunday. In the morning and the evening? Uh -huh. And then people would come over in the evening? Mm -hmm. After church, we'd had young people's meeting across the street. There was a, a building across the street on that corner. Okay. And that's where the young people met. One time we had young people's meeting over there. They called on Ray Bland to say the benediction. <laughs> and he said, I remember he said, Amen, Brother Ben shot a goose and killed, killed him. <laughs> <laughs> kind of broke up the meeting. <laughs> You'd have to know Ray Bland to appreciate that, <laughs> wouldn't you, Ray now? I, I don't want to interrupt y'all, but what I remember about him, he told his daddy, he said, Now, if they baptize somebody tonight, you wake me up. <laughs> In church? <laughs> uh -huh. And he said, they had a baptism that night. And, Ray, Ray, wake up. I'm baptized. He told him, tell him to me. He said, I don't care if they drown you. <laughs> <laughs> have to know Ray Bland to preach. Yeah, you'd have to know him. Yeah, he was something else. <laughs> Had red hair and kind of reddish, wasn't it? Well, were you involved in any other after-school activities besides basketball? Like 4-H or? I was in FHA, home economics. We went to Oklahoma City to the FHA convention about my first time to ever go to Oklahoma City like that, you know. And I think Mother gave me ten dollars. <laughs> I thought I was rich. <laughs> we got up there and some of my friends and Belle and myself and Joanne I forgot who all. But we went to town and we all had some money, so we all bought a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Back then we all wore hats uh -huh. on Sunday, you know. So we all bought us a hat. Did you put him to work? Get him occupied talking. First hat I ever owned. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you remember about uh -huh. that trip? Well, we uh, we he ate at a. He went to the gas station. Get oh, a bit I of think gas. it was kind of a cafeteria that was there then. Hmm. Seemed like I can't remember the name of it. But. Did you stay in a hotel? Did you stay the night up there? No, we just spent the day. Mm -hmm. It was a long day though. <laughs> and Miss, we went with Miss May. She was our home economics teacher, and she had this little old car that was kind of a like a coupe. Mm -hmm. And we went in that. And How I, many people? I got car sick. <laughs> oh. I, I was always prone to get car sick, mm -hmm. so I had to get out and throw up, and I was so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that. Before I threw up, though, that we, they, we got up there and the bridge was covered with ice as you go into Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. It's that old bridge. So we had to stop, and so I got out, and I kind of got over my uh, car sickness, you know, before I threw up. But I sure was <laughs> fighting it. <laughs> um. What well, was your first job you were telling me about while you were in high school? Uh huh. I worked at sat on Saturday at Jimson Taylor, and I was the cashier. They had a bunch of people that worked there, so they made me cashier. Isn't that f funny? <laughs> what did they sell there? Well, they had a, everything, all kinds of clothes and shoes. And, Men's suits and hats mm -hmm. and coats. Oh, the, anything you need to buy. I bought my first dress in there that I ever owned, first bought dress. Mm -hmm. I think I was about 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I'd never had a bought dress in my life. Mother had made every dress I ever wore. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I got my first bought dress. I remember <laughs> getting it. Don't remember exactly what it looked like, but kind of. <laughs> And what else do you remember about Tipton and the community itself? Well, I thought it was great myself. And it was pretty good size? Uh-huh. 
I had a lot of friends and we had wonderful times. I just lived out the country and I thought, oh, if I just lived in town. <laughs> How old were you when you started driving? Well, I didn't get my license till I was 16, but I'd have to practice out in the field on the country roads. <laughs> <laughs> Driver's ed. Yeah. <laughs> Did you drive a tractor ever when you were growing up? Well, Daddy wouldn't let me. He said that was the boy's job and I could need to stay at the house and help mother. I had two brothers, so they drove the tractors. But one time, Cheryl and I went out, and Daddy was working on the tractor. And he was, there was a guide wire that went to the back, something he had on there. So we were up there playing, and uh, he had the motor going because he was working on the tractor, and some way or another, well, we kind of hit it. <laughs> Made in the gear, and he had to run along beside us, reach over and stop the tractor. <laughs> Did he have many other helpers, or was it mostly your two brothers? Well, we usually had a, a colored family that lived on the farm. We had a house farm to live in that helped us, and sometimes the woman named Millie Ann, she'd come help mother in the kitchen. Did they stay out there all year long? Mm-hmm. She had adopted a little old baby of somebody's that didn't want it, you know, so she had this baby. We trying to think what the baby's name was, but we thought she was so cute. <laughs> Would you play with the baby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And did you have any hobos or gypsies come by your house from the train? I don't remember that. You were off the beaten path. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. in the country. Okay. I think my grandparents did. They lived up here in town and they used to have hobos that come by. What were some home, remedi home remedies for sickness or bee stings or... Well, I remember castor oil. <laughs> Mother would put orange juice in it, but you know that didn't help much. Mm. And what did you use the castor oil for? A laxative. Mm -hmm. One time I got real sick. I think I had uh, broke out with something, measles, I guess. And I remember I was really sick. And that's what she gave you? And then one time I had diphtheria when I was little. Oh. And the doctor came and gave me a shot. Then uh, later they came and gave me another shot. I had two. Hmm. When would the doctor usually come out to your home mm -hmm. if he needed to come? Mm -hmm. Dr. Knopf Collier was his name. Were your other brothers and sisters born at home? I think they were. Well, did you have a high school sweetheart? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but mostly, I was just in a group, and we didn't just really have sweethearts. You know? mm -hmm. Just a group of friends? Uh-huh. Well, what did you do after you graduated from high school? Well, I went to OSU to college. and Went to uh, college two years, and then Bob persuaded me to quit and get married, so I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> How did you decide to go to... Oklahoma A&M in the first place? Well, I don't know exactly why I decided to. I just I always thought I wanted to. And then I had a friend that went with me, Thelma Tinsley. And where did you all live when we you got there? with her aunt that lived right on the edge of campus. Uh, Clara Purdy was her name. And she'd been my first Sunday school teacher. Hmm. When I was a little bitty kid, I was in the little card class, we call it, you know, and you got a little card every Sunday with a picture of the lesson on it. <coughs> so she had, had moved to Stillwater. And uh, so we, uh, June, Thel, and I lived with her. 
Do you know what she was doing in Stillwater? She worked at the college in the cafeteria. That's when they had Navy and the Navy women and men were there at school. And she worked in the kitchen uh, for the Navy. Hmm. And she brought home enough food, leftovers, you know, for and to feed us. <laughs> and then Noyce, when he was up there, there was four boys that yeah. lived with, and she'd bring the leftover. I think they didn't really start today. <laughs> oh. Well, what was your first impression of the campus in Stillwater? Oh, I thought it was big. <laughs> Had you ever been there before you went there for school? I don't think I had. I think they, <laughs> that was my first impression. <laughs> And do you remember anything about your classes? Yes, I enjoyed my classes very much. What kind of things were you studying? I was in uh, home economics, home household science, I think they called it. Do you remember any of the professors or? I remember one lady professor, but I forgot what her name was. Did you attend the basketball games at mm -hmm. I did. a and mm -hmm. Do you remember who was coach then? Was that when I, Mr. Iba uh -huh. was there? Mm -hmm. Sure was. So I enjoyed that. And uh, so, like I said, I lived there with Phil's aunt, you know. And uh, I remember they had a free movie on Saturday nights, and we'd go over there and see the movie. Where was that? Do you remember? On the campus, but I don't remember just where it was. Was the student union built yet? No. Mm -mm. Wasn't. And I I remember when I went up there to school one semester I lived in, or one or two I lived in uh, one of the Willard? No. Or Stout? No. But um, I, anyway. Murray Hall? Murray Hall. That's where it was. Murray Hall. I remember Theta Pond. Yeah. Would yeah. you stroll around Theta mm -hmm. Pond? Mm hmm. Did. So did Bob come visit you in Stillwater? No, I didn't know him then. Oh. <laughs> I met him when I was home one summer. Okay. So tell me about meeting him. Well, I came. I'd been down to Lubbock. I'd been out to Lubbock, Texas to visit the Bozemans. They were good friends of our family. So I caught the bus to come home and came into Vernon. Texas. So when I got to the bus station, I was going to call my mother and them to come get me, you know. But when I got in there, well, Cap Lane was in there, and uh, he was the first boy I'd ever gone with. He met him at, ch at church, and he was waiting for his girlfriend to come in on the bus. So he said, uh, why don't you not call your mother and as soon as my, my girlfriend gets here, we'll, we'll take you home. So I said, okay. So that's, that's how I met him. He brought Cap over to pick up his girlfriend. And so when we got home, I started to get out and Bob said, well, Cap and Maureen are going to the rodeo tonight. Why don't you just go with me and we'll go to the rodeo. I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's how it all started. <laughs> and was that rodeo in Tipton? No, it was in Vernon, Texas. Oh. It big, big. It was a big deal. Back then, everybody went to the rodeo. They had a big parade. Santa Rosa. Yeah, the Santa Rosa. So we went. A lot of our life. That's, that's where we went. <laughs> and we went a lot of times after that, too. And so how long did you date? Well, we only dated a year, and then we got married. Where did you get married? We got married in my home. My grandfather married us. He was a preacher, uh, R.F. Whitaker. 
That's his name. Great teacher. Yeah, he was a great Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. At the Church of Christ? Mm -hmm. And then where did you all live after you got married? We lived out in the uh, Weaver district, district. That's where he was from? Mm hmm And you said that doesn't exist anymore? They made a, a work sitter out of it and have uh, inmates out there now, I think. Oh. Or they did. Well, where is it? Can you describe? Well, as you go down the highway going toward the... Frederick, you know, before you get to the curve, just before it just goes straight on, and it, it was down there about half a mile. And was it a very thriving community at the time? Mm-hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. We had all kinds of basketball games and things there, you know, and I remember making home fried donuts and selling them <laughs> out of biscuits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You remember that? And we'd make those oh, donuts yeah. out of those biscuits. Like Mm -hmm. Maybe on a Sunday night. <laughs> then we'd dip them in the sugar glaze, you know. Boy, they tastes good. <laughs> I forgot what we sold them for. A nickel, was it a nickel piece or two Probably. for a nickel? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but they was really good. <laughs> we thought. <laughs> and your husband farmed? Yes, he did. He'd been in the military. It's as soon as he got out of high school in 1943, he was inducted into the Army. His brother was out on a furlough for farming, so, you know, he couldn't get out on a furlough for farming because his brother did. Do you know where all he served in the war? Well, he didn't serve very far because he got hurt in uh, training hmm. up at Fort Camp Gruber. He got shot in the neck. Wow. Uh, he had a big piece of shrapnel in his neck. It was a training accident. So he spent a year in the hospital. Mm. In and out, they'd furlough him some and he could come home. That's when I met him, was on the furlough. And he had that big old slug that came out of his neck and he had a big scar here on his neck where that just barely missed his jugular vein. Mm. And was he a cotton farmer? Yes, and he was a carpenter. He was left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> and when were your children born? Well, Mike was born in 1947, and Patty was born six years later, 53. Were they born in Weaver? They were born in Frederick. at the s &A Hospital in Frederick. It was right across. I'm trying to think what's there now. What, what is there now? Well, it used to, Corner Drug was on the corner and then the hospital was right north of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robert's dad had sinus surgery and uh, Miss Vernon said that you could hear him hammering on his skull down at the corn <laughs> drug store. Oh, I'll never forget that. Mm, goodness. But that's the first time I was ever in the hospital, you know. So. <laughs> Me too. I wasn't in there very long. Mm -hmm. But then I had to stay in bed for two weeks. I stayed mm -hmm. six weeks. Well, really? it might have been six know. weeks. Because mm -hmm. used to, they wouldn't let you get out of bed like they do now, you know. Mm hmm I remember I had some big old bands they put around us. And you remember that? You mm -hmm. were around the babies too? Yeah. <laughs> there was a military base at Frederick. Did you ever have anything to do with that? What? That military base at Frederick? I knew about it. I've, I've been on it and everything, but I never did. Uh... Well, I hate to interrupt this, but Leonard Gray was oh, yeah. in the Air Force there. Yeah, that's where he and Margaret. Do you want? Do you want to, sure. Do you yeah. want to go ahead with that? You Anyhow, can go ahead. They were going. The church was going to have a cookout for the soldier boys, and so they. Uh, no, they didn't want to go. He said, "I'll guarantee you, if you'll go, you'll see a lot of pretty girls. You'll feel good the next morning. There won't be any beer." 
So they decided they'd the go. The food would be good. <laughs> <laughs> and the girls came in and Leonard said, that's the one I want. And that was Marguerite. <laughs> that's how their romance started. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was from down in Texas or somewhere, I think. Yeah, he was. And uh, Daddy's nephew, the one that moved to Clovis, I told you about his parents moving out there to get away from the tornadoes. And uh, they had a son they hadn't seen in years. It, Louis Kilgore was the county sheriff, and he got to talking to this Horace Hammonds, and he something, and he said, well, yeah, he had kin folks around Tipton, and he told them who they were, the Boyd brothers, you know, and so Louis notified Daddy and them, and they went and met Horace, brought him over, killed the fatty calf, and everything, called his parents, and they came. That was a reunion there. <laughs> He'd been, they hadn't known where he was for a long time. Hmm. And then reconnected. <laughs> well, do you have any more stories about anything you can think of right off? Well, I remember when we killed hogs, it was a big day, you know, and the neighbors would come and mm -hmm. we'd have to pick a cold day, <laughs> you know, to do it so it wouldn't spoil the meat. Mm -hmm. And then we had a, a house where we kept the meat. And I remember used to, it was cold enough that uh, Mother would go out there and cut off steak to cook for dinner. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd can the sausage. I remember we always had to turn the jars upside down, you know, to stand them so that the grease would, would go to the, the grease would go to the top. Hmm. What about ice cream? Would you have a ice truck come by or would you get a box of a we, we had a little ice box, box and the, we'd have a Card we put in the window, you know, it'd say 25 or 50 or 100 pounds. You'd put it in the window. Then when the ice truck came by, they'd bring in that ice. And the man would always have pieces that had chipped off, and he'd bring us kids a whole piece of that ice to eat. <laughs> and we'd put it in this big old refrigerator, and it had a pan under the bottom where it dripped, you know. We'd have to empty that. Keep it emptied so it wouldn't run over. <laughs> <laughs> and we had uh, milk and cream and stuff. Mother always made our own cheese. And she'd make a, a cottage cheese. Of course, we I thought that was just fit for the chickens. I didn't like cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> She made cheese, and she had these molds to make it in, and you know it was kind of like this cheese that you buy in a box, like Velveeta, mm -hmm. about that size. Hmm. And how would she keep it cold before you had your? Well, we had this. Uh, seems to me like that we had a place that we put in a window and put the rags over the yeah. window. That was wet, you know, to be cool. Mm -hmm. It seemed like we put it there. Would you ever go down to the river and go swimming? Oh, yeah. Down the creek, mostly. Daddy would take my friends and I down there every Sunday afternoon down out here on Otter Creek. And we had to take our shoes and socks off, wade in the creek, you know, and play and have a good time. And then we'd go home. Mother would make, have made up freezer of ice cream and mm. have ice cream. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Don't run into the pizza hut. <laughs> <laughs> no, didn't have any pizza hut. But we had cra crackers, bologna and cheese. Yeah, and pickles. Mm. <laughs> we thought that was wonderful to have. I didn't know. Cheese and crackers and pickles. Of, mm -hmm. Straight north of Tipton where you went to Otter Creek? Mm-hmm. Sure was. Was Blue School out there still, or did you ever... I don't think it was out there when we went. You went that way behind the Kellys, didn't you? Or did you go straight north? Well, we went both places. 
Mother went to school out there at Blue School. Oh, she did. Mm -hmm. Maddie Mae did too, didn't she? Mm -hmm. One time we went out there, and uh, Joanne and I, there was a steps built down into the creek, you know, where you could get in to go swimming. Mm -hmm. And Mother, Daddy, and Aunt Irene and Uncle Fleming was in there swimming. And Joanne and I were sitting up there on those steps with our feet hanging in the water. So she and I got in an argument about something and she pushed me in. <laughs> Not nobody saw me, you know, and I went under, but I, when I went under, I felt the steps down there in the water and I pulled myself out. I was so mad, I said, I'm gonna drown her. I'm gonna throw her in, I'm gonna drown her. <laughs> But anyway, I got out. <laughs> and then one time, uh, years later, we were out there one Sunday afternoon, and my friend Thelma Gibbons got in the water and she had on some new, what they called harashis. You remember those shoes they used to make, wear that was kind of made out of rubber stuff, straw or something, oh. you know. And she had on a pair of those. <laughs> She lost her shoes in the river in the mm -hmm. water, and we never could find them. <laughs> well, what does Oklahoma mean to you, having grown up and lived here? And well, to me, it's home, and I love Oklahoma. And when history is written about you, what would you like for it to say? I would like for it to say that I was a, a wonderful Christian lady. All right, well, thank you for visiting with me today. You're welcome.